Hey, welcome to the Carol Remarks Podcast. My name is Carol, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. Let's get right to it. Ooh, I have a long row today, this afternoon. I have to row six miles. Well, I don't have to, but I'm choosing to. I'm trying to knock out a couple of these challenges. It's like the end of July, beginning of August, and they have the Row Olympics challenge going on right now until August 2nd. And then the challenge for August starts. Oh, so, you know, it's all confusing. I have to catch up, but then get ahead at all at the same time. Does that make sense? I don't know. But I'm rowing six miles today. Woo! Okay, it'll take me about an hour. And I don't have to race. I don't have to go fast. It's just for me, so I can row super slow if I wanted to. Okay, moving on. We are going to talk about a couple of beauty things, glamour things first. And then we're going to talk a little bit of a pop culture subject and then uh, go to the headlines because this is a podcast where I remark on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. Okay, the first up, um, it's National Avocado Day. Gross. I cannot stand avocados. I might be the only person, well, I think there's a couple of us that uh, do not like avocados. I do not like them. I have tried them. I do not like them. I don't like guacamole. I don't like anything with avocados. It's gross and disgusting. I know they're healthy, but I can't do it. All right, but it's today's National Avocado Day. And in um, in honor of National Avocado Day, I know, what do you think about beauty? Well, how does this, how does avocados have to do with glamour? Well, the beauty brand Wonderskin partners with Chipotle for a Lipotle lip stain. This kind of, I would probably get into this. <laughs> Wonder Skin, an award-winning cosmetic brand known for its TikTok viral lip stain, has collaborated with Chipotle Mexican Grill to introduce a guac-proof lip stain called Lipotle. I would probably try this, <laughs> even though I don't like avocados. I don't think it's like avocado flavored or anything. Uh... I don't know. Is it, is it a green color? I don't know. Let's read on and find out. Created in a custom peelable green colorway. Peelable green colorway. Oh, I think I know what you do with it. It's a mask. Okay, we'll unveil a new nude pink lip stain payoff. Okay, created exclusively for Chipotle in celebration of National Avocado Day on July 31st. So we are thrilled to team with Chipotle for our very first brand collaboration. Very first brand collaboration. Okay. Unveiling a limited edition shade of our viral wonder blading lip stain. The partnership is a perfect blend of two trailblazing brands, both passionate about delivering top notch sought after products, as well as building loyal and robust communities. Well, these communities, I swear. Can we get off the communities? I cannot stand that anymore. I used to be into it. You know, the communities. You know, you have your rowing community. You have your beauty community. I can't anymore with the communities. Stop. It just hit me. I don't like it anymore. Okay, so anyway. So, I guess this is like a mask thing that you... I've, I've, I've not actually heard of Wonder Skin. I guess it's like a lip mask that you put on, but you can peel it off. And when you peel it off, then it's the lip color that's underneath that leaves your lips uh, with a kind of like a stain. I would probably try this. I might have to look into this. I might have to see how much it costs and perhaps get one just to try it. And if I do, I'll put it on my video. I'll put it on my YouTube channel. All right, next up. Y'all, there's a new eyebrow trend. I wish I could try it, but I can't since I don't have any eyebrows. But that doesn't mean you can't try it. <laughs> I guess I could try to, like, cut my my eyebrow tattoos in half. No, I can't do it. That's too much work. All right, so octopus eyebrows are trending. Here's how to get the look. This is from Pop Sugar Beauty. I'll read a little bit about it. But in that, it, again, it's out on my X feed. And... The, in the comment, I put a picture of the uh, ridiculous octopus eyebrows. 
it looks silly. Please don't do this. Uh, if you, I mean, you know, <laughs> while each product feature, oh wait, sorry. If you're even remotely on beauty talk, which I'm not because I do not have TikTok. A lot of these beauty trends are on TikTok. TikTok is infamous for these beauty trends and some of them are not real safe and healthy for you either. Although this eyebrow thing, I don't think this is unhealthy. It's just ugly. All right. If you're even remotely on beauty TikTok, you've probably seen your share of animal themed beauty trends, especially when it comes to hair, the octopus haircut, those jellyfish layers and the wolf cut. I do like the wolf cut though. And there's a wig that I'm thinking about. I thought that I had thought about getting in the past because it is touted as a wolf cut and it's really pretty. It's from Raquel Welch. It's called Black Tie Chic, I think is what it's called. Uh, and I'm still looking at it, but I don't know. I have to watch, look at some more videos on it. I don't know. You know, I go back and forth with these wig things. I want to wear a wig, then I don't. I, and then I look at these wigs and they're beautiful. And I was like, I don't know. It's just easier, more comfortable for me to be bald. Anyway, I'm off topic. All right, the list goes on and on. However, the latest animal-themed beauty look taking social media by storm is one we never saw coming, octopus eyebrows. Now, look, I'm 57 years old. This is probably for the youngsters, So, but I just wanted you to be aware in case you're walking down the street one day here this week and you know you see somebody coming at you with some weird looking eyebrows you can say hey nice octopus eyebrows and you can be hip and happening all right the trend which first went viral on tiktok typically involves dividing your eyebrows into two parts so you know you your eyebrows are horizontal you're going to do a horizontal part on your eyebrows which means you have to have long eyebrows you're going to part them horizontally and then do the top top half, brush them up, and then the bottom half, you're going to brush down and then make them look squiggly. You have to go look at the picture that I put in the on my X file in the comment on this one. All right. While the clip has racked. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, typically involves dividing your eyebrows into two parts and then shaping them into what looks like squiggly lines. While the clip has racked up 12 million views and well over a million likes, the comments show that people are clearly divided. So, are octopus eyebrows worth adding to your beauty routine? Personally, we're still formulating our final thoughts, this article reads. To help dissect the trend, we, we asked a brow expert to answer all of our questions about the octopus eyebrows, like what they are and how to achieve the look at home. Keep scrolling to learn more. So, wow. Wow. Oh my gosh. This is a detailed article. Oh, so eyebrow, octopus eyebrows on thick brows, octopus, uh, coarse brows, fine brows, sparse brows. Wow. This is pretty detailed. If you want to go learn more about that, you know where to find it. All right. Next up, we're going to go to pop culture. Have you guys heard of the pommel horse guy? Apparently he's made it big in the Olympics. He's a young kid. They're calling him like a Clark Kent because I guess the camera panned to him during when he was resting off the floor when he was not working out. He was, I guess, standing or sitting somewhere. He had his eyes shut, but he had his Clark, his Clark Kent glasses on. Uh, they're calling him Clark Kent Stephen. I'm going to butcher his last name. Nedorosik might have clinched Olympic glory this week, but it's his longtime girlfriend, Tess McCracken. What a name, McCracken. Hell yes. <laughs> Who captured his heart. Can you imagine if she had a hyphenated name if she marries this guy? It'll be Nedorosik McCracken. Yes, do it, girl. All right, Nedorosik, 25 years old, captivated the country this week when he helped secure the American men's gymnastics team first medal in 16 years with his expert handling of the pommel horse. Photos of his cool composure, eyes shut, and spectacles on while resting on the sidelines before his event went viral, prompting comparisons to Clark Kent. We're going to scroll through... Wait, soon enough, 
Viewers wanted to know about the Lois Lane to his Superman alter ego. It wasn't long before the internet solved the mystery and found McCracken. First, I would like to say, thank God he's not gay. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but it seems like every man that they highlight that's cute or whatever is typically gay these days. Thank God he has a regular girl girlfriend and not a trans. Okay. I'm going to skip over all of this. They met in college. They're cute. They have pictures of them together. They're adorable. So McCracken says she's seen the, she has seen the memes on social media about her boyfriend serving Superman and ultimate chill vibes. She says they're pretty spot on. It used to be Tom Holland and Spider-Man. Now we've upgraded to Superman. She says, I love it. I think it's so funny, especially with the glasses and the curly dark hair. I absolutely see it, she says. So they're so cute together. And I wanted to get down to this last little bit here. <laughs> this is the only reason why I wanted to share this story. Together we love, this is what she says. Together we love watching on YouTube, Good Mythical Morning, she continues. And we love watching together while we're eating dinner or just, you know, in the evenings. The couple is also really into New York Times games. So are my, me and my husband, the gent, and we're like in our late 50s, early 60s. She says, we play the connections and we do Wordle together. <laughs> How cute is that? How His greatest accomplishment is that he guessed the word Q on the second guess and got it, she adds. How adorable. So that's a great all-American story, right? I love it. All right, so now we're going to go into the headline front page news uh, from Disclosed TV just in. Qatar warns of chaos in the Middle Eastern region. And, of course, Iran's Khamen Khamenei says severe punishment awaits Israel because there's a couple of the leaders that have been killed of the terrorists, Hezbollah and Hamas. I think two of those leaders have been killed. But I wanted to get over here also to the New York Times headlines. All right, yes, I wanted to go over here to the New York Times and read a couple of their headlines and then click on the one that I wanted to share with you. So Kamala Harris, much older lover, gave her a BMW and salary boosting job as she climbed Democratic Party ranks, of course. I'm just reading a couple of these until I get to the one that I want to read to you. Uh, top chef star diagnosed with stage four tongue cancer. I am a fighter. Oh my gosh. I need to go read that later. Top chef star diagnosed with stage four tongue cancer. I didn't know there was such a thing. Uh, let's see what else. Simone Biles seemingly shades former teammate after winning gold medal at 2024 Paris Olympics. She seems like the type that would do that. Um, more, more, more. I'm trying to get to the one I want to read to you. Yankees, Yankees, <laughs> sports, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm getting there. I'm sorry. Carrie Lake and Ruben, somebody, win Arizona Senate primary. Other state races remain close. I'm getting there. I promise. Bear with me. Mm -hmm. It's the one about black the black journalist convention. Oh, come on, where did it go? It was just here. All right, let me go find it. All right, gosh, dog. I guess it's not such front page news after all, since I had to go digging for it. National Association of Black Journalist Members outraged after it invited Donald Trump to speak at convention. Co-share steps down. Why? Why? Donald Trump has been invited to appear at National Association of Black Journalists annual convention in Chicago on Wednesday. And some of the nation's top black journos are furious Washington Post columnist Karen Ataya even stepped down as co-chair of the convention after the move. Look, you are journalists. Are you not interested in who the Republican presidential candidate is? 
I think maybe you're not such a good journalist after all. This is definitely showing your true colors. If you don't like it that Donald Trump came to speak, uh, I would be all over that as a journalist. Hello? Uh, maybe you're not so smart after all. Trump is, I mean, doesn't that show their colors? Doesn't that show their, show their true colors, their true things when they're supposed to be, aren't journalists supposed to be, um, is it unbiased or biased? I can't get those words confused. They're supposed to be middle ground and neutral and cover all the things. But I guess they got mad because a Republican, I mean, come on, you're journalists, do your job. Instead of being all pissy little tantrum, temper tantrum. Oh, okay. Trump is expected on opening day to, to, oh my gosh, hold on. Sorry, my voice was leaving me. Trump is expected on opening day to, to participate in a special conversation with moderators Harris Faulkner of Fox News, ABC News, Rachel Scott, and Semaphore's Kadia Goba. Some members of the organization are outraged over the decision, we are told, and some are so disgusted they're even canceled their plans to attend. Oh my gosh, these people are dumb. They're supposed to be journalists. How many times can I say that? They're obviously not journalists. I'm just going to take that title away from them because they don't want to be there and cover this. Hello? It's become a hot topic on social media with several prominent journos. Journos. They have to call them journos now. Journalists. Is it really that hard to type a little couple extra letters? All right. I'm sorry. I'm getting off topic again. And longtime members of the association saying they're frustrated with the NABJ's decision to provide a platform for the former president. You, you're just telling on yourselves. Goodness. I'm going to put that out. I'm not going to finish reading it. I'm going to put that out there on the X so you can read it for yourself if you would like to. All right. We need to get to the question of the day. Okay. I have a question for you. Who is your favorite comedian? I'm going to have to pick Jerry Seinfeld because I love his TV show. I love his very simple and clean style of uh, observing things that we all can relate to. Uh, how he can take something so simple and make it so funny. I think it's because we can all relate to it. So, uh, and we've seen him, we've seen him, I want to say, I wanted to say in concert. He's not in concert. We've seen him in person. Uh, he came to Huntsville and we went to his act. It was really good. So anyway, that's the question. Who is your favorite comedian? It could be dead, dead, whatever, past comedians, whatever. My favorite is, has always been Jerry Seinfeld. Okay. Gotta go. You guys have a great day. Thank you so much for listening and sharing my content. I do appreciate it so much. Love y'all. Every, each and every one of them. Love you. Okay. Gotta go. Bye. What's that? Who pays your salary? What's that? Who pays? What's that? We're not a democracy.